you're like a tall, in shape, good looking dude. I'd look at you and I think there's nothing wrong in his life at all. Like, oh. there's no way he's self conscious about anything. Well, I guess now, we're both you, wrong, man. I look at you and I think this guy's fucking what environment, got it all. What you environment know? do you feel comfortable in? Just a more real environment, a more just calm, uh, uh, just a, uh, an 10 people, 50 people, 100 people. Yeah, as long as, yeah, I can, I can feel okay in 10, 50. When it gets to, to be a little more than that, it's, sometimes it's just too much. But when the music's loud and I can't communicate with people, then that's where I start to feel uncomfortable. That's my end. That's my fucking But I end. kept going back. I kept thinking there was something wrong with me, that the environment was okay. Yeah. But it wasn't, man. And that's what happened that night. I went to this club, and uh, they had a party for my friend's fashion line. And then I got in this taxi after this girl gets in with me. I left early because I was going to be on Opie and Jim Norton. This is when Opie and Jim were still together. And uh, this beautiful girl gets in the taxi with me, this Asian girl. And she just started talking about the night. She said that she had fun at the party, but that her boyfriend wasn't in town. Then she goes, her boyfriend's never in town. Then she's like, what happens in taxis stays in taxis, right? That's what she said. So I'm thinking, fuck yeah, you know, like. She wants me to make a move on her. So I make a move, shut me down. And I don't know if that's what made me feel weird after that or whatever, but the taxi dropped her off after that. And uh, and then it was just me and the driver, bro. And this dude spoke another language, you know, something fucking fancy, you know, something that could play soccer, you know, like this dude, fucking, you know, like this dude was betting on fucking foreign soccer games on his phone for sure, you know. And uh, he said, I thought he said drugs, dude. And I just said cocaine. That's what I said. And next thing you know, we're in North Harlem. Um, he bought some cocaine for us. He comes back in the car. We're doing cocaine. And then he's like, I got a gift for you. I got a gift, you know. And I thought it was going to be, you know, I grew up in like a troubled area. I thought it was going to be his dick, you know. Like, I'm, you know, that's what I was expecting anyway. And, uh, and then a hook prostitute knocks on the door you know this lady gets in and i think it was a man honestly in hindsight she had these big sunglasses on kind of a man's face that was under the sunglasses you have cocktails in you at this point yeah had a couple tequilas dude and uh so now we're partying bro me him and me and the driver were first partying for about an hour dude i got so high i remember thinking where is the driver that's how fucking high i was <laughs> and he was sitting next to me doing cocaine <laughs> Yeah, at what point does this become not a taxi cab ride? Like, when does the meter get turned off? Like, this oh, is the meter's weird... going, bro. The meter's at about two seventy, bro. Uh, no. So he's got to fucking be positive because I'm paying for this experience, bro. <laughs> so then, dude, this hooker gets in. She had, she had kind of long hair, huge sunglasses, covered about sixty percent of her face. And the forty percent of her face you you could see to me look like a man's face, right? Like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just like if I were on a game show and it was like guess forty percent of this person's face, I would have guessed man first, right? You know what I'm saying? Like look like a man's face, you know? Or it looked like a woman had just shaved recently. That's what it looked like, you know? So anyway, we're all do, we're all we're all getting high together, and the hooker starts making advances towards me, bro. This sounds ridiculous. <laughs> And I got out of the car, man. I felt uncomfortable, dude. <laughs> so then, dude, you like slide. You don't around. understand. In my world, I'm thinking you're a Louisiana boy in fucking Harlem. No shit, do you feel out of place? <laughs> I feel out of place there, but no, I always felt comfortable in North Harlem. Yeah, right. That's I know that neighborhood where you're at. You know what I'm saying? You're not in the Bronx yet, right? You're not in the. Yeah, Bronx I don't know yet. where we're at. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. You <laughs> was it dark? It was a dark. Dark. That's all that matters. Yeah, you ain't having a good time if you got in a dark neighborhood oh, on one part of the night. I was raising one. I know when I'm oh, back. Oh my god! You know, I know when I'm back. Bro. Now, what time is all this going down? It's about three thirty. All right. So, so what time? Lo, so you walk out of the cab. Where are you now? You getting another cab? No, I'm in the street. Luigi comes out after me. That's the dude I was partying with the driver. <sighs> And, dude, you know what's crazy is he had even one of the lights on the taxi wouldn't go off, and he made, like, this little paper mache thing and put it over the light, bro. Like, this dude was, I mean, I don't think he was homosexual, but this dude was about the most romantic fucking cab driver I've ever spent time with, dude. And, dude, it was more romantic in that taxi than it was at your fucking Airbnb, <laughs> bro. That's the saddest part. <laughs> so, dude, I get out. He comes out after me. <laughs> he made me give him 100 bucks, right? And I gave him the hundred because I was a little scared at this point. 
and I'm thinking he's going to pay the hooker and she'll go. But then I look back over there a couple minutes later, a minute later, um, and they're kissing on each other's necks. He's spending my hundred with this hooker, dude. He fucking just got this hundred out of me, bro. Wait, you're, so your taxi driver bullied you into buying him a hooker? <laughs> no, he owed him money anyway. But right away, he took the money. Luigi took the money and said, "Hold on, five minutes. Let me, go get tw- let me go get twenty dollars worth off this hooker." He took that money and reinvested it in the neighborhood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And look, I respect hookers, man. Like, you know, I've been through some tough nights, man. Not in fucking North Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, right, but still, man. I don't give a fuck. What you well, here's, I respect women that are out there if they got to be out there selling their bodies. No, I, I don't have nothing right. against that. I know you don't. But in North Harlem, you ain't getting into nothing good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you understand true. me? You keep saying North Harlem. Are there Harlem? Parts I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like East Harlem? Listen, okay? all I know it is was North, I used to go to Harlem to buy Coke, and I'd see women out there. And, dog, let me tell you something. It's an illusion. Yeah. It's an illusion. First of all, four out of ten of them got bigger dicks than you. Oh, damn. Lady. Four? Four out of ten of those chicks. We in, don't like those In odds. those days. It was, you got to remember, up in Harlem in those days, the Bronx, it was open fucking corral. And then the 90s, the Russians came. Oh, yeah. And I never saw it, but I had friends tell me, you go to Queens, and there'd be six-foot Russian blondes with leopard miniskirts. That you give them three hundred just to eat the assholes. They were that hot, wow. like hot, banging, banging. Like they took over, so all the other ones, the crack hoes, disappeared. Yeah, all that, you know. But in those days, even when I was, when I got in trouble with my buddy, you know, Dodger, and we were going over there, those hookers, yeah, those city rat oh, hookers in those days. You had a that that takes a certain nerve. Yeah, a lot of them work at the Popeyes during the daytime. No, they don't fighting. work. They they're at the clinic in really? the daytime, oh, getting blood transfusions. Dude, we used to have this lady Victoria, Miss Victoria, in our neighborhood, bro. You could pull up, bro. You could eat her ass for like forty bucks, right? She'd sit in your car window, dude. Just basically put her ass in your fucking car window, like a fucking to go box. You know, you could if you had somebody driving, you could even have them drive the block. And she would just sit in there like a little side item, bro. But so this dude, get Luigi, I give him the 100. He gets back in the car. They're making out. I'm kind of pissed, dude. But I don't want to bring that negative energy back into the car. <laughs> right? So I deal with my feelings out in the street for a minute, kind of process through that. Why don't you want to bring negative feelings back into the car? Just because I'm already really extremely high, man. I'm under the influence of cocaine. Um, It's almost 4 a.m. And I don't know these people that well. And I still need to get home. And for some reason at this point, I feel like Luigi is responsible to get me home, right? So I get back in the front seat, right? And they're hooking up in the back, a little blowjob. Like, it's getting getting wild, you know? Uh, And I want to still do cocaine, you know, so I'm, but I don't want to interrupt them, dude. So I remember trying to quietly do cocaine in the front seat, just like, like, <laughs> like, like, like the softest little inhale you could do. Were bro. you watching like, them at any point? Oh, oh, yeah, some, dude. <laughs> I was definitely listening hard. You know, <laughs> did you stink? I mean, uh, no, it's I like don't like cologne. Like, dude. All you smell is like cologne. Like when you walk in the middle of them, all you smell is like fucking. Heavy duty perfume, covering yeah, I'm up. I'm trying to remember. She smelled like violence to me in tattoos. She was a <laughs> tough lady or man. I mean, I thought she was a man. The face looked like a man's face to me, but she had big sunglasses on. She could have been one of those taller Vietnamese people that kind of look black at night, you know. <laughs> uh, so we're in there, and uh, now I'm in the car, and I'm trying to quietly do cocaine, dude. Like, just like a fucking, just like a. Like just doing it in like an installment. It's like I had a bump on layaway. Why do you, you know, have to be polite? Fucking... They're back there fucking. Why can't you just? Because there's something wrong with me where I sacrifice other people. Like I just feel like I got to be considerate at all times. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt them, dude. I guess I don't know, man. I was fucked up, bro. So they're partying. At one point, I remember even turning my head back and just dumping cocaine quietly into the top of my nose <laughs> like this <laughs> just like just as quiet as i could be and a cop goes by dude cop goes by i get scared i tell luigi i'm scared bro he don't he don't give a fuck dude this when i realized like he didn't care about me as much as i cared about him i guess and he's like you drive you drive and that's when i got in the driver's seat and i drove man i drove us i drove us about a mile and a half dude i don't even know where i was dude and uh, and then I pulled over because a voice in my head, bro, 
first a voice in my head is like, dude, at least you're, it was like, you're out here, bro, you're high, you know, you're doing cocaine, uh, but at least you're making money, you know? <laughs> like I was working, like I was a cab driver. And that's like, dude, my brain's fucked up. Like this ain't my cab. You know, I gotta pay for this. And then my brain was like, you don't have a commercial driver's license. And that's what got me to pull over, dude. That technicality that if a cop stopped me that I wouldn't have one. And I pulled over, I got another taxi, got back to my hotel room, finished doing my cocaine. And I had to be on Opie and Jim Norton that morning. And it's 5.30 now, dude. I took three showers, bro, in 10 minutes, right? I have one question. Yeah. Did you pay Luigi or did you just kind of get out and just get into another camp? <clears throat> we ended up in a little bit of an argument at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I left $100 on the car seat <laughs> and yelled adios at him really loud. Bro, I don't even know if he spoke Spanish, dude. <laughs> I'm just screaming adios at him, <laughs> him and this fucking hooker who had the smallest tits I've ever seen, bro. Look like a man's chest. But, uh,. Then I go to Opie and Jim, dude, and the other guest for the day is Daryl Strawberry. And I could not even feel my face, dude. I couldn't even think. Uh, and that's when I was like, this is a bad look, you know? I couldn't even talk. They were asking me questions, dude, and I'm just, I couldn't even, like, the, I, I couldn't feel my face. I could all my thoughts was coming out of my neck. Like, I was running on, on neck thoughts, dude. <laughs> I'm fucking thinking with my neck, bro. So I fucking sat there for three hours, bro. Just roasting. Now I know how you feel, kind of late. I just sat there just, just boiling in my own fucking drug-induced bullshit. And, uh, and then I fucking left, bro. And I, I'm halfway there. Halfway on the walk over there, I realized I had on fucking sweatpants with jeans over them bro <laughs> horrible that's like a catheter outfit like if you may, might be getting a catheter and you might have to stay overnight <laughs> ah